53 degrees outside the window on 8th Street, 92.1 WROI. WROIFM.com, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. Hello, Scott. Good morning, sir. Welcome back to the studio. It's good to be here. Nice to have you with us. And of course, if you have the smartphone or an Android device and you download that TuneIn Radio app, you can take us wherever you happen to be going, which might be today to say hi to Brian Johnson at the Fulton County Community Foundation. Hi, Brian. Well, good morning, Tom. Morning. The, the rain has cleared off it for has. at least a moment. So We're rolling. Nice day out there. So I think fall has, can we say fall has finally arrived? We can because uh, the 22nd of this month uh, was the first yeah, day of fall. Yeah, the first day of fall, so and it feels like it out there. Officially, so. we are in the fall season. Well, good deal. Well, with that, um, we have a couple of things going on at the foundation. You have a lot of things going on all the time at the foundation. We do, we do, we do, which is a good thing. So, um, preschool scholarships, we're still getting applications for um, preschool scholarships. Um, these are um, somewhat financial need based. So, if folks have a child in preschool, um, maybe are having trouble paying for that. Um, or have not sent a child to preschool yet because of the financial need, we'd love um, to encourage you to check out a preschool. Um, the area preschools have the information about these scholarships um, and they can help um, get you filled out with the paperwork that's required on that. If you're having trouble finding a preschool, you can always stop by and um, we can point you in the direction depending on what area you live in, whether Rochester, Akron, Fulton, Kiwana. Um, we have contact information for the different preschools. So we'd love to help children get that um, early education um, start. Um, that's so important to their entire important. Right. educational right. career. So exactly. Um, something else that we have going on in the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Um, of course, Tom, we're not qualified to be part of this group. Um, this is only for women. Um, and what happens with this group is uh, members make a contribution of $120 annually. Half of that is used to make grants for a um, community project, and then the other half goes into an endowment fund, which is growing. Um, it's been kind of interesting. This group started at the end of 2010, and that their endowment fund has already grown to over over $40,000, and um, is helping making grants in the community now so only um, ten bucks a month only ten bucks a month Sorry. it's it's pretty affordable um, you can be involved with that um, here are some things that are going on in the community and it's, it's really a wonderful group um, the deadline for the contributions for 2017 membership is December 31st of 2016 so I'd encourage if members um, are renewing or somebody's interested in joining that group um, we have the information on our website, nicf.org. You can get a brochure, or um, we'd be more than happy to mail that to you, however the best way for um, women who are interested in that. So, Well, today I wanted to kind of do a little bit of review of our granting process okay. this year. It's Good been kind of interesting. We started off the year by, by removing the deadlines for our grant applications. In previous years, we've always had a deadline of grant applications sometime about this time of year, usually the end of September or early October, and we would ask for grant applications. We'd receive a number of grant applications. Our committee would review them and then make selections. Well, this year um, we've we've removed those deadlines. So we've had grant the grant application available since the start of January, and we've been working with. Um, different organizations and it's been kind of interesting to see how this process has changed. Um, at the first part of the year we thought are we going to get any applications because we just didn't get many applications. A lot of times in the past the applications would come in that last week or so before the deadline. Um, but it's been really neat to see how some of these applications have worked this year. Um, so I'm going to start off um, the first one that we received and were able to award was for the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce. Of course, the Chamber has been, been changing some of the things that they do. Um, they were in the process of needing to upgrade some of their technology, and, and one big piece was their membership database so that they could offer more services to their members. Um, as a member of the Chamber, um, the Foundation receives a lot of information, a lot of networking opportunities. Um, and a lot of great services about 
just maybe who to contact if we have a specific need. And so these technology upgrades allowed them and they've been working on implementing this software um, so that members can actually have better services, more information from the chamber. Um, we granted them $4,000 to okay. help them upgrade these programs. Um, and that, that happened in the early part of the year. So they've already been able to implement this where in pre previous years we would have been receiving an application from about this time and giving them an answer and probably would have been next year before they would have been able to um, implement this. So um, another one that was interesting, um, United Way of Fulton County. Of course, I started off with two organizations that help serve other people in the community. And one thing that the foundation really tries to do is support other organizations that are really making an impact in our community. Um, and we were able to grant them also some technology upgrades. They were in the process of upgrading some of their software so it makes it easier for them to interact with the Indiana United Way. It takes less time doing reports, um, being able to just better serve Fulton County and also better, more efficiently use some of the resources that the state provides. And it was kind of interesting, this process happened um, mid-year and during the grant application process they came over and they said well we have this really emergency need right now our computer crashed oh, and wow. we're in the process of upgrading and so we don't want to put the money into it to repair it can we get an answer on our grant so we know whether we can upgrade now or and so that was one thing that happened this year with our process that actually allowed them um, had we been on a deadline we would still be waiting to give them an answer on that. But because of the flexibility, um, we were able to give them an app, a, a response right away and be able to help provide some of the funding. Um, they received $4,750 okay. for um, some new computer hardware and also their technology upgrades, and they're in the process of, of implementing some of those things. So it just makes the organization as a whole um, more efficient. So. Um, it's wonderful to be able to support these two organizations that serve so many people in our community, um, community-wide. Win-win all the way around. Win-win all the right. way around. And it's, it's kind of neat to see the new process that we have working because at first we thought we're not sure how this is going to work <laughs> and it's worked out very well. So, um, Another grant that we were able to provide was to the Fulton County Youth Leadership Academy. Of course, this program is similar to the Adult Leadership Academy that so many folks have been through. Um, it really exposes kids to things in our community. Um, they take tours of local businesses. I know myself as the Adult Leadership Academy, I'd been here about 10 years before I went through that. And it was very eye-opening just to realize some of the businesses that are here in our community that we don't see on a day-to-day -day basis, but really are state and regional and worldwide leaders in their fields um, that are right here in Fulton County. Um, a lot of times people don't see those opportunities, but they are here and it's really neat to see that. So the Youth Leadership Academy is helping teach um, specifically juniors in our area high schools about um, some of those opportunities and also leading them through a leadership program um, to help them develop some of their leadership skills. Excellent. So wonderful to see that organization continuing to serve. Um, another one, the Liberty Township um, softball program down in Fulton was needing to do some upgrades on their fields um, as softball changes there were some requirements as far as field dimensions and some amenities um, they received a grant for six thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars to help expand their dugouts they almost doubled the size of their dugouts for the players um, and have also been able to set up a new outfield fence um, with some different dimensions that better fit softball today. So Excellent. it's been wonderful to see that um, that upgrade um, to that facility that will allow them to be able to do more things as far as maybe host tournaments, um, provide their players with an experience that if they're playing in that league, going to a different field, being more at home, going to an away field that's, that's similar to what they have at their home field. Um, another neat side effect is they were actually able to donate their old fence from the softball diamond to the Fulton Community Center, which is literally right across the parking lot, and help them um, set up an area that um, a fence line on their property. Good. So it's it's 
recycling at its best. Yeah, payback. So that's right. It, it's wonderful to see that. So. Um, another one that's been very interesting to watch is the Fulton County Animal Center. Of course, they're doing such a wonderful job with um, animals. If you're on Facebook, I'd encourage you to check them out as a friend. Um, my only caution is that you'll see a lot of cute <laughs> dog and cat sure faces. Do. And um, it's wonderful to see what they're doing with that. But one thing that's been a big problem in our community is... Um, owners and just feral cats as well spay and neuter um, that's one of the quickest way to help control the pet population if you grew up watching right. Price is Right like I did you always heard Bob Barker say don't forget to spay and neuter yeah, very your much well, very much into that that's right it, it's pretty amazing when you start looking at especially cats over a couple of years how many stray or unwanted cats a single pair of cats can can produce so um, the animal shelter approached us about um, helping provide a program for um, pet owners and also to help um, control some of the feral cat population in our right. community um, and it's been wonderful to see that I believe that they've had two um, transports already um, what happens with this program is pet owners can register for this and then there's a specific day that they will drop their animals off and the animal shelter has partnered with a Indianapolis area um, low-cost spay neuter clinic so the animals are transported to the spay neuter clinic um, have the surgery that day and then brought back later okay. that day so um, it's been wonderful to see that um, and just the sheer numbers of, of cats and, and dogs that have been serviced by this program it's pretty amazing so um, we were able to provide $5,000 for that program um, and I do know that they have um, a couple of dates in October so if somebody's listening and is interested in participating in that program you bet. Um, I'd encourage you to give the animal shelter a call 223-7387 um, and check on the dates um, and availability because I know that these programs it's been amazing how fast they fill up um, on this but just a wonderful program that that will go a long ways to help control um, the animal population in our community. Yep, very important. Another new project, um, Sai Iota Zai approached us and really a neat program. Of course one of their areas is um, arts and so they have been able to partner with the high schools um, in the area, Caston, Rochester and Valley and they're going to be holding an art banner contest. So students in the high school art classes will be designing some banners um, that will then be displayed this spring in Rochester in the downtown area. So a neat collaboration of um, students at the high school level being able to express some of their artistic talents and then a local organization being able to provide some some nice banners. I noticed this week some of the banners for the car show that's coming up next week are downtown and it, it's amazing how just a little touch like that can make can kind of set Makes off the downtown so um, it's wonderful to see that and looking forward to some of these ideas and designs that these high school kids have and then looking forward to seeing them next spring in our downtown um, celebrating some of those art um, abilities um, another one that is a new project for us is the city of Rochester and the tree board approached us um, and we were able to grant them fourteen thousand five hundred dollars for a project to help them plant some flowering trees down Main Street okay um, they've had had some different ideas and some different opportunities but um, they really wanted to plant some flowering trees that would not only provide beauty but would also prevent having issues with things like sidewalks in the tree lawn. Exactly. And so this project will allow them to plant um, a couple hundred trees um, between 9th and 18th Street on Main Street and really um, create a beautiful entrance to our That'd downtown nice. Rochester. Yes, very so, nice. Um, kind of looking forward to seeing that in a couple years, what, what our downtown Main Street looks like. Um, another big thing that's been going on in our community for the last five years, um, there's been a number of churches that have partnered to provide every Wednesday evening a free community meal for folks that uh, may need that or just may want to come and, and join with others as they, as they dine. Um, so we were able to provide $3,000 to support that project. 
um, every Wednesday evening at Grace United Methodist Church. Um, different churches have participated um, in this program, but Grace has kind of been the spearhead as far as the location and also um, the organization of that. So um, they'll be able to continue that wonderful service in our community. Excellent. Um, the Kiwana Union Township Library. If you follow the library, you know they've they've been very active in providing a lot of things for the community in Kiwana, and it's becoming a really centralized gathering place. Um, they have a neat downstairs meeting room that's used by a lot of community groups. I know they have a weekly meeting there that provides an information program. Always have programs for kids, um, different game nights, different things. Um, one thing that they didn't have was a sound system. Um, if you're going to have a speaker in or have some sort of event that has multimedia, um, you need that. And so we were able to grant them um, $1,250 to be able to provide for a sound system so that they'll have better ability to offer a wider variety of programs and some of the things that they've got going on enhance um, those activities. So congratulations to the library. You bet. Um, also, the Kiwani Township Library was recipient of a sustainability award from the foundation, which helps them um, create an endowment fund within the community foundation. So in the future, as donors say, hey, I really like what has happened at the library and I want to provide for some ongoing support, um, there's an endowment fund that will, every year, will provide them funding for the library, for the programs to be able to help continue to do these great things that they're doing. So. Um, so that brings us to a couple of impact grants okay. that we've awarded this year. Um, one of them was for the Manitow Training Center. Of course, that facility has evolved over the years. Started out with doing a lot of things as far as producing products for other companies, um, helping train the individuals that are participating there for a career in maybe an industrial setting or just um, some life skills. And the facility, when they started, was very well fit for that, but now their, their training has evolved and they provide a lot more things and their facility really is not the best fit for them, so they're needing to do some upgrades, um, make it more user-friendly. Um, one thing that they mentioned to us is just the noise level in the facility and uh, with different different abilities that the people have there. Sometimes just the noise level is an issue. So they're gonna be able to do some renovations to their facilities, add a drop ceiling, add some more efficient lighting, um, just make the facility more user-friendly for their clients. I know one thing they said was autism is a huge thing. Noise level is just a huge barrier to anybody with autism that uh, most people don't realize how much that affects somebody that has has um, some of those needs. So um, we were able to award them $38,725 to Excellent. help provide um, for some of these facility upgrades. And then another one that's been exciting, um, Matthew's Market. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is a partnership with the Cross Church and have served so many people in our community. Um, and they're to the point where they're able to actually serve other pantries in our community. I know um, they work closely with the Kiwana Food Pantry to provide them some um, some services and some food. Um, one thing that they aren't able to do is provide refrigerated transport for some foods. Um, there are some requirements if they're offered certain products that they have to be transported in a refrigerated um, vehicle. And so they haven't been able to accept as many products as they would have been able to. So um, they are actually in the process of purchasing a refrigerated van so that they can receive some of these donations and then also distribute more donations to other food pantries like Kiwana and the Winnemac area that they serve. Excellent idea. Um, and so it's been wonderful to see that. Um, that was a $35,000 grant to help them do that, but they also wanted to help um, provide some resources to other community food pantries. So um, to that end, it's been kind of interesting going through this grant. Um, the Community Foundation, along with um, some other organizations, Food Finders, Food Bank, um, the Food Bank of Northern Indiana and Midwest Food Bank are going to be holding a what we're deeming a Feeding Our Communities Food Pantry Summit. Um, we've invited area food pantries or anybody that may serve um, people that are in need of food um, to attend this. Um, 
and it's going to be held October 18th um, from 11 to 1 at the Rochester Library. Okay. Um, we are in the process of sending out inv invitations for that, but if somebody has not received an invitation and is interested in that, I encourage them to give us a call. Um, I know that um, folks from Matthew's Market will be there talking about some of the logistics of how they do their food pantries. Um, different organizations will be providing some information about resources through the food banks um, that are available. And our hope is that this can help um, bring food pantries together and maybe through the sharing of ideas um, be able to provide resources for everybody. So okay, um, again, that's October 18th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Rochester Library. If you're interested in attending, um, please give us a call. Um, we'd like to have RSVPs by October 14th. Um, lunch will be provided for that program. Um, and if you are a food pantry or serving um, folks that are underserved in the food area, we'd love to have you join us for that. Okay, so, good idea. So looking at all of our grants throughout the year, so far we've been able to award just over $120,000 in grants. Well done. And part of, part of that ability has come from the successful um, Lily Gift 6 campaign that we just completed that helped us um, increase our grant dollars and give us some flexibility to be able to serve so many things um, throughout our community. So thank you to everybody who made gifts to that or has made gifts to a community fund in the past and making these grants possible. We always say these are needs that are here today that were not here a lot of times when the donors made those gifts. And so by giving them to the foundation and saying, please use these in the most efficient way today, it helps us react in, in the case like the United Way, react in a couple weeks to a need that they had um, that was a very immediate need, them not having to go out and raise funds for it and, and really upgrade their organization. So thank you to everybody who's made that possible. So, well with that, um, just a reminder, of course, the Women's Giving Circle dues are due by the end of the year. Um, preschool scholarships, um, check with a preschool or foundation would love to help you make contact with a preschool um, interested in the food pantry summit on October 18th we'll have information about all this stuff on our website nicf.org um, you can like us on Facebook we actually have on Facebook a link to information about the grants that we've provided throughout the year so if you'd like more details on any of those you can find us on Facebook um, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Okay. Give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd All love right. to talk to you any, about any ideas you may have. Brian Johnson, thank you very much for being here. Congratulations on all those grants. It's nice. Well, thank you, Tom.